Well, good morning. It's good to see you guys here today, whether you're watching online or here in the room. If you've got a Bible, let's go to Acts chapter 8. It's where we'll be uh, today. Last Sunday, Pastor Landon started a, a brand new series for us called Gospel Voice, and he did a fantastic uh, job and uh, grateful for him. And you know, the idea of the series is that God has given each one of us a gospel voice, and uh, we're meant to essentially talk about spiritual things, talk about the gospel, talk about Jesus with other people. And so how do we do that? How can we do that better as followers of Christ? And so um, let me start by asking this question. How many of you guys would kind of think that you've got a pretty good singing voice? And let me just uh, quantify this. So we've got like a scale from one to 10, okay? Everybody be honest, like 10 being Whitney Houston, right? Uh, one being like Frankenstein, right? Whatever he would sing like. Uh, how many of you would say that your voice is a five or above? Just go ahead and let us know who you are, five or above. I see that, okay, all right. Not, uh, you know, handful of people being modest in the room. How many of you would say that you're sitting beside someone who is a five or less? Anybody wanna just said the person I'm beside, I heard them, they were singing earlier. I can guarantee five or less, um, maybe even negative. Um, you know, when you talk, Jesus says, or the Bible says, you know, make a joyful Lord into the uh, Lord, right? So as long as it's a joyful Frankenstein, we're, we're good. But, you know, the thing about our singing voice is that oftentimes, you know, we're, we're quick to, you know, assess our ability, right? I'm good. I'm not that good. I can carry a note, you know, but not really that good. I'm not going to get up here and sing a solo. You know, we can all kind of talk about that and, and uh, have an idea. But when it comes to a gospel voice, I think the majority of Christians essentially move to, well, that's not me. We assume that we don't have a, a, a good gospel voice, right? And we kind of rank it like our ability to sing. But in this series, what we want you to know is like, your gospel voice has nothing to do with like a singing voice because every single person listening to me today who has put their faith in Jesus Christ has a gospel voice and you were meant to use it. And so we start with this premise, you have this. You don't have to pray for this. You don't have to, you know, figure anything like you, you, like you don't have to pray something to get you know, this special voice and I have it, but you don't have it. And have you gotten it yet? That's not it at all. Like every single one of us who have faith in Jesus have this voice and you are meant to use it. And so last week we said that the uh, gospel voice is just simply sharing the good news about Jesus. And we do that in a variety of ways. We actually present the gospel and go through exactly what it means. You might be investing in someone's life. And so we say, invest and invite. You might be investing in the relationship and you're inviting them to come to church. You're inviting them to come to um, you know, your small group. And maybe you're having a, a spiritual conversation around something that's going on in their life. And so all of these things are important for us. And so, um, uh, I want to sp specifically uh, hone in on what I think God is doing in your life, what I, I think God has been doing and will continue to do in your life that you may not be aware of. And that is, have you ever like, you've been at the store or you've been out somewhere and you've run into somebody and maybe you didn't know him and you just met him uh, or maybe you, you knew them and you know, you just haven't talked to him a while and for whatever reasons, your, your paths kind of cross, you know, and you're like, oh, hey. And, and for a moment there, you, you have a conversation. And then in the middle of this conversation somewhere, it's like something within you starts to really like speak to you. Like the, the spirit of God is, is really what it is. You may not notice it at that point, but something inside of you is saying, encourage them. Something inside of you is like, invite them to church. Something inside of you is like they're hurting and you're recognizing that pain. And maybe for many of you, you have at least once in your life taken that opportunity and you encourage them or maybe you did invite them to church and, 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 and you step away from that moment and you look back on that moment and you think, man, God was in that conversation. Like that wasn't an accident. Like I haven't seen this person I haven't even thought about this person. And randomly, 
we come into our past cross, we come into contact, and like I could just feel the presence of God, or perhaps you're in the receiving end. You're going about your business, you run into somebody, you're hurting, you're going through something difficult, you start to talk to this person, you walk away from that uh, meeting or that, that conversation and you were encouraged. And you walk away and you were like, man, I just needed that. I'm so thankful that I ran into this person. But whether you're on the receiving end or, or you're actually the one that's sharing or maybe it's kind of a mutual thing, you've experienced this. You've walked away and you've said, this was a God moment. God orchestrated my day. He orchestrated that person's day so that our paths would cross. I call this a divine appointment. A divine appointment where God connects you with someone and yeah, it seems random to us, but in the providence of God, there are no such thing as random coincidences. And so I believe these encounters, these appointments are happening all the time in our daily life. And the question that I want you to start asking is, are, am I, are we taking advantage of them? I think sometimes for many of us, we've shared or we've received, but uh, the point of today's message is that we would begin to recognize these moments and that we would respond to these moments in a godly way. And so in Acts chapter eight, we see a man by the name of Philip who has such a conversation. He has a divine appointment. And, and so kind of a context of Acts eight is that Jesus is, you know, resurrected. And so for the next 40 days after he uh, appears to the disciples, he's with them for 40 days. Uh, 40 days is a, a unique, special number in the Bible. And so uh, he's there 40 days teaching and continuing to train them. Then on the last day, he gives them the great commission, go make disciples. He ascends into heaven. And then for 10 days, they meet together every day and they pray together and they're meeting together and they're worshiping together. And then in Acts chapter two, Peter is speaking. They're praying, the Holy Spirit is sent. Now the Holy Spirit is, is, is available and we receive him into our spirit when we put our faith in Jesus. But in this moment, it was brand new. It's been about eight weeks uh, since the resurrection. And uh, here, here is this church that is brand new, uh, eight weeks on Acts, in Acts 2, 8,000 people roughly are now in the church, right? 3,000 people come on this day, eight weeks after Jesus leaves, not resurrection, eight weeks after he ascends into heaven, there's roughly about 8,000 people in the church. And so that's kind of where we're at. And when that happens, it begins to stir up persecution in Jerusalem. Remember, they're just in the city of Jerusalem. Uh, so much so that in, as you keep reading in Acts, Acts chapter seven, Stephen is using his gospel voice and he's murdered because of his gospel voice, right? And, and, and they stone him to death. And that emboldens all the other you know, uh, leaders in the community who hate this Christian movement. They're emboldened to like ramp up the persecution after that. And so it gets really bad. And so as a result, the Christians, all these new Christians, brand new believers, they start to leave Jerusalem. They start to scatter. In fact, in Acts 8, 4, it says, now those that were scattered were preaching the word. So don't miss this. Like God uses persecution. God uses suffering. God uses difficult situations to advance the gospel. So good news for those of you who are going through a challenging moment right now. In some way, as we submit ourselves to the, to the Lord, God will use your gospel voice through this situation, right? He always uses suffering persecution to advance the gospel. And so that's where we come to Acts 8, starting in verse 26, where we see this man, Philip, who's one of the ones who God, he, he, God tells him to leave and he is leaving, but he's taking with him the message of the gospel. And so here's what the scripture says. It says, now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, rise and go toward the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a desert place. And he rose and he went. And there was an Ethiopian, a eunuch, a court official of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who was in charge of all of her treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning seated in his chariot. And he was reading the prophet Isaiah. And the spirit said to Philip, go over and join this chariot. So Philip ran to him and heard him reading Isaiah the prophet and asked, do you understand what you're reading? And he said, how can I unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to come up and to sit with him. So 
leave your Bible open. We're gonna go back to uh, the story, but this is, this is how we're moving here. So uh, I wanna re- remind you that every single person in the world is on a spiritual journey. Everyone you come into contact with is on a spiritual journey. They may not, not, not know how to uh, explain that or they might not put it into those words, but they are. People are seeking truth. People are hurting all around us. And God is going to bring you face to face with them. And I want you to start looking and living your life as if, as if every conversation that you are having is a potential divine appointment. So you've heard us say, we don't wanna just go to church, we wanna be the church, right? The, the, the church isn't the, the walls of this facility. The church is made up of people, right? And so we want to be the church and take this message with us no matter what situation we find ourselves in. And in this story, God's ordained a specific man, Philip, to uh, connect with another man, this Ethiopian eunuch, we don't know his name. And in this moment, he has this divine appointment, this opportunity to encourage, to teach, to share the love of Christ, to share the message of the gospel. And this man's life is changed forever. So I want us to start to get some principles out of this that we can apply to our life. And so the first one is this, you've got to make yourself available. As a follower of Jesus, we want to make ourselves available to God. Philip had made himself available. He hears and, 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 and sees that God wants him to go to this new city. So he begins to travel. As he's traveling, he hears this man is, is, is reading uh, from Isaiah. And God tells him to go close to the chariot. So he goes. Right? He engages this man in a conversation. He's, he's making himself available to God. He wasn't selfish about his schedule. He could have just said, you know what? I got to get to Gaza. And so I'm going to put the AirPods in and I'm going to read a book and I'm going to just, you know, charge and and I got to get there and I got to focus. And no, he's, he's makes himself available in such a way that he's still listening to God. He doesn't let his schedule trump God's schedule. And so I want to encourage us that God has chosen his people to be the, the, the primary way that other people come to faith, right? God has chosen to work through his people. And so that means every single one of us who are Christians today listening, God is choosing to use you. Now he could use a burning bush, right? To speak to people and to save them. He could do, do that if he wanted to, but he doesn't. He chooses to use you and I, broken, um, messed up, sketchy past, like not, not all put together, messy at times, don't, don't have it all figured out, but God chooses to use you. He chooses to use us to advance the gospel. I love what 2 Corinthians verse three says about where we get our confidence uh, to do this. In verse five, not that we are sufficient in ourselves, to claim anything as coming from us, but our sufficiency is from God, who has made us sufficient to be ministers of a new covenant. So wherever you're at, God loves you. He doesn't want you to stay the same way. He wants you to continue to mature and grow. But right now, today, he has made you sufficient to be a minister of the new covenant. All right, we always talk about, I'm not good enough. I, I don't have it all. We, we've got, yes, to all of that, not good enough. He, he's even saying here, we can't claim that any, any of this comes from us when we talk about the gospel or spiritual things. I stand up here every week and it's like, I, I, don't, I don't have anything in and of myself to talk about outside of, of what Christ has done in me and what I see in the word of God. And, and that is true for us in our daily conversations as well. And so he's made us sufficient to be uh, ministers of this new covenant. He has made you sufficient right now to do this today can walk out of here knowing that God wants to work in you and will work in you and that you are sufficient to actually do this. And we're confident in that. And when we do that, we are actually trusting in God in, in, in more ways than we even understand. When we're engaging in spiritual conversations, like we're saying, God, I don't know everything there is to know about all of this. I'm putting myself out there but I am trusting in you.
to use me. I'm trusting in you to guide me. And some of us might say, well, tried it, didn't work. I don't know why God doesn't use me, you know, more. And I wish he would, but he just doesn't use me, you know, as much as I think he should. And my answer to that would, would be God is using you as much as he can. He's using you as much as he can. In other words, he's, he's using you as much as you're making yourself available to be used. No? And, and I think when we think about it in, in, in those terms, if we don't feel like God is working in us, maybe it's because we're too busy following our schedule and fo- instead of following God's schedule. And so I can relate to this and, and I'll just make a confession. Like this is hard for all of us. And my, my schedule is, is important to me. So I struggle with that as, as well. Like I don't wanna be inconvenienced. I would rather prepare like I'm prepared right now like I've thought through this and, 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 and maybe you're a planner like me, like you'd much rather get the plan together and then meet and then have a discussion. And sometimes we get to do that. But oftentimes we've just got to be ready in the moment. And we've got to submit our schedule to what God is doing around us as he brings people into our past. Say, so, so God, He wants us to be available. And so maybe that's just like the biggest thing you could say today to God is, God, I'm available. I want to make myself available to you. Next principle, as we keep moving here, is is this. We want to be sensitive to the needs of others. Sensitive to the needs of others. You know, all around our city, there are hurting people. Yeah, I mean, you're hurting. You know Jesus, but you've got some pain points in your life. And so if it's true for you as a follower of Christ, you know it's going to be true for those that you're you know, going to run into this week. But we've got to be sensitive to those needs that, that we hear in these conversations. And the truth is we all have needs. And ultimately, every single person in the world has uh, needs. And, and, and the only way that we're ultimately going to experience you know, the, 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 the true peace that only comes from God is, is from God. God has created a God-sized hole in all of our hearts and it, it can only be filled by him. And so every single person around us is looking for clarity. We're, we're, we're looking for meaning and answers. We're looking for peace and especially those who don't know the Lord. We're looking for significant relationships as well. And so God created us to have all of these needs and he's the only one that can fulfill them. And so we wanna be sensitive to those needs in the conversations that we have. And so engaging in these conversations, yes, can be challenging for us, but at the same time, we have to realize that it's easy for us to talk about sports and weather. Why isn't it more, um, you know, why aren't we more inclined to talk about some of the most important matters in life, like spiritual matters, like Jesus and And so there are many obstacles to this. Let me mention a few as we think through this. The first one is just simply gonna be plain old fear. We're fearful, right? We're fearful of the embarrassment that might happen. We're fearful that someone might laugh. We're fearful that we don't have the answers. There's a lot of fear that play into sharing, you know, our faith with other people, but we're gonna help you with that. This is definitely a legitimate factor, but you can't let it win. Think about it like this. So, I think one of the most difficult jobs in the world has to be like a weatherman, weather person, right? And so they're trying to predict the weather all the time. And so today we're kind of experiencing that. It's like, there's going to be snow, there's going to be snow. And then, and then it rains, you know, and that happens, you know, consistently. But what you have to do is, 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 is recognize that's a really challenging job. Like all the tools, all the computer generated stuff that they've got, and they still you know, struggle because it's unpredictable ultimately. But if you live your life in such a way that as soon as the weatherman says it's gonna snow, you run to the store and you buy you know, your bread and your milk, and then you hunker down you know, for the day or the week. Meanwhile, the sun could be shining. Meanwhile, it could just be raining, right? We can't, we can't live in fear like that. And I think so often Christians think the prediction is the world is going to eat you alive if you talk about Jesus. They're gonna punch you in the face if you talk about the gospel. That's the prediction, right? That's the forecast that's been given. And that's fear. That all comes from fear, right? Oh, they're gonna hate you and they're gonna punch you in the face and all these terrible things are gonna happen. And so just hunker down, man, get your bread, get your milk, stay home. 
don't engage. Like this is legitimate, but we can't let it stop us. You see, the reality is that there are hurting people all around us. They need to be encouraged. You have answers. You have a story. And God, the providence of God, is going to connect you with the people that need to hear your story and need to be encouraged by your voice. And I believe that because I see it in the Bible. And I believe that because he's doing it every day all over the world. And so the question has to be, are we going to join him? Are we going to make ourselves available to him? Here's the second one. <clears throat> second one that we struggle with. I don't like to talk to people. And now this is more for our introverted folks, like introverts, you know, you, you say, I don't really like to talk to people, right? I, and, 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 but that's not really true. You talk to people all the time. You just like smaller groups. You just like one-on-one. -on -one. And so that's, that's important, right? God uses every type of personality to be able to connect with other people. And so uh, we can't allow this to be what challenges us, that keeps us quiet. Remember, like growing spiritually and, and uh, growing closer to the Lord is risky and challenging and outside of our comfort zone. And so everything that God asks us to do is outside of our comfort zone. And talking to people about our faith is just one of those ways that we're going to have to get outside of our comfortable space. I love what Charles Spurgeon once said. He said, if you have no wish to bring others to heaven, you're not going there yourself. <laughs> Gut punch, right? Now, some of you would say, oh, no, 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 no. I wish that people would go to heaven. But then you would say, I just don't want to talk to them about heaven. Now, how would my wife feel if I said, you know, I love you and I want to marry you and we get married. And then every day since that wedding day, I never spoke to her again. And people said, hey, Trent, do you really love your wife? Oh, yeah, I love her. Oh, she's doing great. And she's like, he doesn't love me. He doesn't care about me. He never speaks to me. <laughs> you see, if you really wish that other people will go to heaven, you'll talk about heaven. But if you're not talking about heaven, chances are you don't care if people go there. And that's a problem if you're a follower of Jesus. This is a legitimate like issue, right? But we can't let it stop us. We've got to get comfortable with sharing, right? And so this is important. So this leads us to number three. Number three is I don't have expertise. This is like number one in, in church life. I don't have an expertise. I don't know how. I, I need, you know, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to do and all this kind of stuff. Legitimate, can't stop us. Legitimate, right? That's why we're doing this series. You're gonna get some, you know, practical things. I also uh, wanna encourage you to go to our Gospel Voice training that's gonna happen in a couple of weeks. It's a one night deal, hour and a half. We're gonna, we're gonna pump you full of all kinds of practical tools in order to have these conversations. And if you really wanna take a step of growth, then you'll join our leadership summits, which have taken the place of the School of Ministry to kind of change the name, um, decrease the amount of writing and books and kind of, kind of, kind of changed how we're training um, people. And so we realized through the School of Ministry, like we've got interns and residents that are doing this, that wanna go into ministry full time. And so they need like the seminary level like stuff, a lot of reading, a lot of books, a lot of things. So that track is more in line with, with, with their direction in life. And then for our leaders in our, in our churches, like we're making it way more practical, less writing papers and less reading a ton of books and, you know, a few more, few important books. But so that's what leadership summits are, 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 are all about. And so taking your next step of faith might be, for, you know, signing up for that to six weeks deal. We talk about how to share faith, um, evangelism, how to make disciples, how to be a leader. All those good things are coming. I want to encourage you to do that. And so that increases your expertise, right? That grows, you know, some of that stuff that we use as an excuse. And I love what um, I, I read this week. One guy put it like this. One of the reasons you may not talk to unbelievers about Jesus is because you don't talk to anyone about Jesus. Yeah, <laughs> that's going to make it pretty tough. <laughs> if you're not talking to anybody about Jesus, then chances are you won't talk to unbelievers about Jesus. If you're not in a small group where you're not 
uh, practicing talking about spiritual things and in spiritual conversations than talking about your faith to people that don't go to church or don't know Jesus is going to be almost, you know, it's going to be incredibly challenging. And so uh, why don't we talk about Jesus ever? Why don't you talk about spiritual things ever? Husbands, why don't you ever ask your wife how she's doing spiritually? What are you, what are you afraid she's going to say? Has the forecast been, if you ask her a question like that, she's going to eat you alive. So don't say anything. Well, that's fear. That's fear. What's Philip doing? He's asking great questions here. And so I want to encourage you in this, that no matter where you're at, like there are reasons why we don't talk about spiritual things. And one of the reasons is we go to this, I don't have expertise. And we always, always talk about the how. How do we do this? Right? Look, you've been in sermons before that talk about this and you're like, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. I'm terrible at this. I need to do it more. I feel terrible. That's not what this is about. But don't go to a, a how excuse. I don't know how as an excuse. And I want you to start thinking about it in this terms. It's not about a presentation that you learn. It's about a conversation. So stop thinking about how and start thinking about why. Why is the, the right question, not, not how? Because how you do it doesn't really matter to God as long as, as long as you're doing it and it leads to the right place, right? The why is the real question. And so you don't need to learn a presentation and memorize this like they did in the 80s and early 90s, all these things. And some of it's helpful, but at the end of the day, like, like it's not about going through a presentation. It's about having a conversation with somebody and every single one of you know how to do that. That's why the scripture says you're sufficient right here, right where you're at. That's why I love this example, because Philip is simply asking questions. He's saying, do you, do you know what you're, you're reading? Do you know what you're you know, actually reading in this um, Isaiah passage? And so just be good at asking questions. Be curious about people's life. Ask questions like, how do you think a person goes to heaven? Ask questions like, do you believe in Jesus? Why, why not? Like these are spiritual questions that lead to a discussion. And if someone has a different opinion of you, that doesn't mean you're the, the relationship's over. It means that you've learned a lot more about them, right? And this is what the, the, the challenge for us is. It's not a how, it's really a why. And why do we do this? Because without Jesus Christ, people will suffer in hell for eternity. Hell is a real place. It's not a fantasy place. You know, we're, we're, cessationism that just says, you know, you die and then it's over is, is, is not a biblical concept. We live forever somewhere, heaven or hell. That's the why. The why is that Jesus has given us this mission. And so we advance the gospel by simply being prepared. Like 1 Peter three fifteen says, always be prepared to give an answer to anyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have, but do this with gentleness and respect. Gentleness and respect. Here's the reason I have hope. Jesus has changed my life. And if I, if I were to think about the 2,000 plus people connected to Foothills Church, if we walked out of here today and we lived our life this week and every single one of us had one conversation, prayed with one person, can you imagine the miracles that God would do in the hearts of this city, in the hearts of this region as we scatter every single Monday morning. I think it would be incredible. Um, so many obstacles. One of them, I don't have expertise. And then finally, here's the fourth. We're busy and selfish. We're busy and selfish, right? We're busy with our schedule. We're selfish with our time. And that's just the reality. And I think we're always going to fight this in America uh, for our entire life. Like we're not going to be able in a, in a spot to where we're a, ever able to say, it's slowed down enough. Now I can start sharing my faith. <laughs> like that day's not coming, you know? It's just like in anything else, it's slowed down enough. Now I think I'll focus on my marriage and really, let's just really go after it now. No, it's never going to happen. You have to take time. You have to take the opportunities. And, and, and busy and selfishness is in our heart. We're always going to uh, fight that. But, but we have to take the necessary steps of, Yes, learning more. Yes, growing in, in that, right? Go to, the, go to these classes. But 
at the end of the day, some people just think, well, we'll just let the professionals handle this. Trent, you and, and you know, the team, that, that you're, you are all the professionals. You've been trained in this. Go do this. The problem is I'm not going to be in the room with you this week. God is sending you to the meeting, not me. They didn't invite me to the meeting. The problem is in that meeting, they don't know me and they wouldn't listen to me anyway. You're the pastor of the room. You're the missionary that's been sent. You're not alone though. Holy Spirit's with you. He'll speak through you. He'll strengthen you. He'll give you responses. Do it with gentleness. Do it with love. Right? But you are speaking in the truth of all the people that you will come into contact with. God's going to be working in the hearts of the people, just like this Ethiopian man. God's already at work in this man's life. And so what he's asking you to do is to be available, to be sensitive to their needs. And then finally, he wants you to have courage to take the initiative, courage to take that step, courage to ask that question, courage to engage the conversation. This is what he's asking you to do. Philip had this courage. God said, go to Gaza. He goes. God says, go to the chariot. He goes. Here's the man reading, initiates the conversation. Do you know what you are reading? Do you understand that? Right? And, and, and then the man responds, right? And says, I have no idea, right? What a, what a great open door. Let's keep reading the story. Let's go back to verse 31. And he said, how can I, unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to come up and to sit with him. And the passage of scripture that he was reading was like a sheep. He was led to the slaughter and like a lamb before his shear is silent. So he opens not his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was uh, denied him. This is obviously talking about the suffering servant, Jesus, the Messiah, who can describe his generation for his life is taken away from the earth. And the eunuch said to Philip, about whom I ask you, does this prophet say this about himself or someone else? And then Philip opened his mouth and began with this scripture. He told him the good news about Jesus. And as they were going along the road, they came to some water and the eunuch said, see, here's water. What prevents me from being baptized? And he commanded the chariot to stop and they both went down into the water and Philip and the eunuch and he baptized him. Great story. Verse 31, how can I know unless someone guides me? How am I supposed to know unless someone guides me? Everybody needs a guide. Everybody needs a guide. You know, Luke Skywalker had Yoda. <laughs> Frodo had Gandalf, right? Batman had Alfred. Who was your guide? Your guide was the person that led you to Christ. Your guide was a parent, a grandparent, a friend that invited you to church. Somebody guided you to the gospel. Maybe it was multiple people and you had multiple guides, but you didn't find Jesus all by yourself. Very rarely do we hear the burning bush stories. I had a dream, I read, the, I read a verse and boom, I gave my life to Jesus. They're, they're out there, but the majority of us were invited into a relationship and invited to church. God wants you to be somebody's guide this week. God wants you to be someone's guide. You say, how do I know? How do I know that this is, 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 is actually going to work? How do I know that I'm actually going to be the guide? And what happens here? When he asks the initial question, the man invites him to come sit with him. That's what I would call um, a positive response. And that's it. It's not rocket science, folks. The forecast isn't, you know, a beheading if you engage a spiritual conversation. <laughs> it's not the prediction. You know what you're reading? You know what it takes to go to heaven? Shut up, man, I wanna talk about that. Door closed. <laughs> Pretty easy. If someone responds, you know, I've been thinking about that. My mom just passed away and I, I'm like, man, where is she? Open door. It's not rocket science. You ask a question, you listen to the response. If you get invited in, now you know, and you walk through the door. Jesus told us as much. He gave us a parable that we call the parable of the sower. And he said, there's a farmer that goes out to sow uh, seed into the ground. And, and so he's comparing the seed to the gospel. And so farmer's going out sowing seed. The gospel is the seed. And, and then the, 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 the ground or the dirt, uh, there's different kinds of soil, essentially. 
He said, sometimes they fall on the path. And he said, the bird comes down and scoops up the seed and steals it. And he said, that's like the person that hears the gospel, but then Satan comes and, and steals the message from their heart. It doesn't stick. Then he says, some soil is like rocky ground. Right? And so it's, it's not very deep, it's shallow. And so you, you, you cast the seed on the, on the rocky ground and it, it sprouts up quickly, but because it doesn't have any root, then it dies. And, and so he says that, that happens sometimes when you spread. They, maybe it, it initially is excited, but it dies out because there's no root. And then he said, some falls along the thorns. And this thorny soil, they, they get excited at the beginning, but the thorns represent the cares and the pleasures of the world. And so they, they, they say, oh yeah, I'm all about it. But then the cares and the pleasure of the world, you know, creeps into their life and they fall away. But then he says, there's the good soil. And the good soil is, you know, you, you cast the seed on that soil, then the, the crop grows. And, and the way that you know that it's good soil is because he says they produce fruit. They produce fruit. It's a great story. And he's calling you to be a guide and to cast the seed this week upon the soil of the hearts of men and women that you come into contact with. And some of those people are gonna be divine appointments. It's gonna be at a grocery store. It's gonna be um, at one of your kids' you know, events. It's gonna be at a business you know, get together. It's gonna be in a meeting. It's gonna be in a million different ways. And you've gotta be sensitive to the needs of others. You've gotta make yourself available. And you've gotta be willing to initiate the conversation. Um, I've often you know, recognized that within the first five minutes of any conversation, um, you're gonna hear pain points in people's lives. Hey, how you doing? Oh, I'm doing fine. Oh, well, how's work? Well, it's going okay, but you know, I, I didn't get the raise this, this year and things are tight. Pain point right there. Oh, things are great. Oh yeah, well, how are your kids? Oh, but you know, they're, they're okay, but one of them's sick and one of them, oh, pain point right there. I read a stat that people share pain that they're going through uh, roughly 27 times, <clears throat> excuse me, 27 times a, a, a day. So throughout their day, we're gonna share those painful situations in our life. Subtle ways, depending on who they are, but you gotta be sensitive, you gotta, you gotta hear it. What if in that moment, you know, it could be a believer, what if in that moment, person that shares a concern, you just said, hey, can, can I, can I pray about that with you right now? You might be in aisle 12 at Kroger, right? But can I pray with you about that situation? I'm sorry you're going through that. And then in a two sentence prayer, you just put your hand on you know, their shoulder, you pray over them in that situation, and then say, listen, I believe God's gonna bless you. God's gonna continue to grow you in this area and keep your head up, right? Imagine, <laughs> just imagine. 2,000 plus people made that habit in their life. The amount of prayer, the encouragement. I think the, the morale of our city would increase by uh, 50%, maybe 100% if we were doing that on a regular basis. You know what that also does? It builds relationships and takes you into a, a, a relationship to where now they really wanna hear about what you think because they know that you care, you've built, you've built trust. And when you've built trust in someone's life, they're more likely to listen to you and believe you. Right? And so you invite them to church. This is our invest invite strategy. That, that's, that prayer moment is what we would call a care through prayer moment. When the spirit is working, they're gonna engage you back. When the Spirit's not working in this person's life, then it's gonna be shut down and, all right, have a great day. That's it. But here's the reality. You never know what kind of soil you're working with until you do a little digging. You ever tried to plant a, a, a tree or something that you know, had to go down in the ground a few feet? That soil is hard. Man, it's, it's challenging, right? If you just have a shovel, it can be really difficult, but you don't know until you start digging. You're not gonna know the soil of someone's heart until you start asking a few questions. Then you'll know, then you'll know. But you know what I've found and discovered in, in, in life is that you know, there's, there's all kinds of different soil, right? Men and women's hearts. In fact, the story that Jesus tells us, he's basically saying that 75% of the people that we're gonna talk to 
will not receive the gospel. <laughs> There's three groups, they're not gonna do it. There's only one group that says is, is good soil. It doesn't mean they're never gonna accept it, but the majority won't. So what does God do when the soil is, is, is hard? He'll bring a storm. He'll bring a storm into their life. And when the storm comes, the rain pounds away and the rain softens the soil. And again, it's that moment where if you are sensitive to the spirit, if you're engaging in this, you know and you hear when someone's hurting and now they're more receptive to the gospel message. And so that's my encouragement for you today. That's my hope. As we think through this, I would close with this thought. Your, your gospel voice is mostly about having the courage to speak and letting that be enough. Letting that be enough. Have the courage to speak and let that be enough. Don't, don't, don't feel like you, know, you have to do some masterful job and you're gonna look amazing and you're gonna do something incredible and all these wonderful things. No, just have the courage to simply speak and let that be enough. Walk away no matter what happens, no matter what people say and, and, and saying like, that's all I needed to do. I just needed to have the courage to say something positive to them about spiritual things. Thank you so much for watching this video. We'd love for you to like the video and leave a comment. And we also encourage you to subscribe and click the bell so you never miss a post from Foothills Church. To learn more about FC, just head to our website by going to foothillschurch.com or by clicking the link in the description below.